Welcome to Lecture Online. Now here we're going to take a look at a few examples of mistakes that students typically make, things that we should be careful of and things that we should avoid. For example, what is the difference between those two radicals? Can we take the square root of the left and can we take the square root of the right? And if not, why not? On the left side, notice there's no plus or minus signs anywhere inside the radical. It's simply x squared times y squared divided by 100, which means we can write this one as the square root of x squared times y squared divided by 10 squared. And then notice, whenever you take the square root of anything squared, you can simply take it outside the radical sign. And since there's no plus or minuses, this can simply be written as x times y divided by 10. On the other hand, when you have something like this, x squared plus y squared divided by 100, this can indeed be written as follows. The square root of x squared plus y squared divided by 10 squared. And now we can take the 10 squared out because it's the numerator divided by the denominator. This can be written as the square root of x squared plus y squared divided by 10. But the numerator cannot be taken outside the radical, even though there's an x squared there and there's a y squared there, and we're taking the square root, there's a plus sign here. And because of that plus sign, you cannot take out an x or a y, either one. This is how you have to leave it. That's the simplest you can write it. If the plus wasn't there and there was a multiplication sign, then it would look like this, and then you can indeed take out the x squared and the y squared from the radical and write it as x times y. But if it's like this, it cannot be done. Hmm. Let's say that we did it erroneously. Let's get my pen here. Let's say that for some reason we thought that this may be x plus y over 10. Well, the reason why you know that this is not equal to that is because when you multiply this together or when you square this, you will not get this quantity back. Let's try that. Let's try the quantity x plus y squared. Well, this will give us the first term squared plus the last term squared, plus twice the product of the two, plus 2xy. And this is the missing term. That's why you cannot take the square root because you don't have the plus 2xy there. Therefore, x squared plus y squared, when you take the square root, you do not get x plus y. So this cannot be done. That's not correct. This is the final format of that example. So now let's take a look at the right, which is very similar to what we have on the left. Instead of using the radical symbol, we're using the fractional exponent. So let's take a look at the one on the right. Notice we have an x squared times a y squared divided by z squared. No, no plus signs, no negative signs, no subtraction, no addition, simply multiplication and division. Which means we can take the fractional exponent and apply it to each of the exponents there. In other words, we have an exponent raised to an exponent, we multiply the exponents together. So the proper way of simplifying this, this is equal to x squared multiplied times 1 half times y squared multiplied times 1 half divided by z squared multiplied times 1 half. You simply multiply these exponents times this exponent, which gives you x to the first power, y to the first power, and z to the first power like that. And that is correct. Now you may be tempted to do the same over here. We have an x squared plus y squared divided by z squared, and you may think that this is equal to x plus y divided by z, just like you did over here, by multiplying this exponent times 1 half, this exponent times 1 half, and this exponent times 1 half. But it is not correct. The reason why it's not correct is because there's a plus sign there, and therefore you cannot apply the 1 half to the 2 here and the 1 half to that. In other words, the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is equal to the quantity x squared plus y squared to the one-half power, is not equal to x plus y. So, no matter if it's written like this or is it written like that, don't be tempted to think that this is equal to that because it is not. And instead, what we should do is we should take this one and realize that only the denominator can be simplified. So this can be written as x squared plus y squared to the one-half power, which cannot be simplified, divided by 
z squared to the one half power, which is simply z. And that would be the simplest form in which the quantity on the left can be written. And that's how it's done.